The 2023 Nigerian census seems to be facing a myriad of challenges as the debt draws nearer. Many are questioning the readiness of the government and the commission to conduct a successful census given the new issues that have arisen, including postponement of training and opposition to the initial debt. Currently, the training of ad hoc staff has been postponed due to emerging issues leading to concerns about the readiness of the country to hold the census. There are also concerns over the acceptability of the results by the incoming president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who has not been sufficiently consulted. In addition, there are rumors that the National Population Commission server was hacked and that there may be issues with funding the census exercise. Have a look at this. The problem we are having is that uh, obviously our website has been hacked no. and we have problems. No. Automatically, yeah. some people have been here started creating problems. So we don't have any option other than to postpone this work, this mm. training. Mm. Because if we go by this training, definitely we are not going to get what we want. Mm. Yeah, is it? So since yesterday, they had been sitting over the issue by the management at the headquarters. Hmm. We have been communicating with them, not until at night, when they began the to send huh? the yeah, message yeah. that this thing has been postponed. Okay. That's why they do that, we do not agree. We continue to communicate, not until we get why it has been postponed. Hmm. So the work cannot be done like this. It's not possible for us. Mm -hmm. If we did that, we are not going to have the results. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that is what had happened to INEC mm -hmm. when INEC postponed also their work. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, and this is this is a work that if it has been done, it has to take at least another ten good years mm -hmm. before thinking of doing another one. Mm -hmm. This is for development okay. and planning in the country. Yeah. Mm. Data acquisitions mm. and other yeah. things. Mm. Definitely, we cannot continue with the job. That is the present information. So we have to wait until we get another day, or until the server is changed, and until we are able to have a better confirmation that our server will not be touched. For this reason, our chairman has is leaving Nigeria today. He's going to United Nations to tell them what is happening so that uh, they will also assist us in controlling in controlling the server and the sunnets i hope we are together yes sir so please and please we are sorry for what had no problem unless i cannot continue in the situation it is inshallah while you will be enumerating somebody has already done your own enumeration area <laughs> and he's sending the result before you people have sent it so it is very just going to be a very serious problem nigerians will not take us right so please i'm here to announce to you people that the exercise has been postponed but we, are, we promise by god willing whenever it is rescheduled after taking that uh, corrections and other necessary uh, uh, action to hmm. hello viewers this is daily politics and i'm your host hamza idris tonight on the program we are joined by one of the advocates for the postponement of the 2023 census Shima Christian is a public commentator and he joins us on Daily Politics tonight. Welcome to the program, Chima. Thank you so We're much. We're happy having you in our studio. Well, I'm also happy to be invited to Good. be here. Uh, we will go for a quick break now. And when we return, the conversation commences. Don't go away. Welcome back. Chima, I will, I will start, should I say maybe on a light note, that man, does he look drunk? <laughs> no, 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 he doesn't. Okay. I think he's doing his work because apparently the people he was talking to were so visibly disappointed yeah. that what they came for did not happen. So Which I was saw training him, of ad hoc staff. Yes. Was, yeah. So I, I saw him with all the forthrightness you can muster trying to explain to them 
what had happened and why the exercise had to be postponed, I mean the training exercise. And as you can see, because the people he was talking to could visibly see his hurt and his fault right less, you see them you know, the agree, ag agreeing with him. Because in some places, especially when you're playing hide and seek, mm. people begin to suspect yes. maybe there's something sinister. But he came out and told them what was the exact cause of And the they were case. attentive. They were attentive, and I believe that at the end of the day that they agreed with him that they would be invited on a later um, uh, date for the training exercise. That's what Niger said. Why I ask you this question, which you know, <coughs> sounds funny, I'm sure yeah. our viewers, many have not seen this clip. Mm -hmm. um, when we got it, we, we did a report on it for the paper and, and, the, and the television, and we, we contacted INEC officials. The, the response we mm -hmm. got, a respect to... Mm -hmm. um, the, the, this uh, census um, official from Niger State was that he was drunk. That drunk? was why, yes. In fact, they dismissed him. They dismissed him? They dismissed everything he said. He dis okay, yeah. <clears throat> they dismissed what he said. They said um, they, they postponed the training of the ad hoc. You know, the, the training ought to have been mm -hmm. ongoing by mm -hmm. now. But yes. uh, it has been suspended. And up mm -hmm. to now, mm -hmm. nobody gave the real reason for the uh, suspension, and that is why, because we'll be monitoring you, mm -hmm. we brought you to, to, to the studio. Yes. But they said he was drunk. Is, is that the, the way to qualify officials? Meaning you disown your own for some reasons? You see, uh, what is happening with Nigeria, and not just the NPC, is that officials uh, are not that forthright in communicating their challenges. When you talk to government officials, they are quick to tell you about their successes. Yes. They are quick to tell you, we've done this, we've done that, we've done the other. But anytime they're having challenges, they like to keep a lead at it. And then they keep that lead on the problem and they keep assuring you. Mm. I assure you everything is all right. Yes, I, assure I assure you. you I assure, I assure you. you. I bet yes. there is something fundamental Beneath, happening yeah. under. And then I don't believe that the man was drunk. And anybody who has seen what the man said knows that he's not drunk. I mean, and they're hiding something. They're, they're hiding something. And some of these things are easy to verify. And some of those people working with this establishment have also verified that some of these challenges exist. Wow. Although they won't, don't want to be named, mm. but these challenges, we know that the organization, as of today, is having a lot of difficulties in going ahead with the census. And the census is just less than two weeks from now, right? Just less than two weeks. And you can see that training is supposed to last for 10 days. And now take away 14 days or 13, 12 days. And then you now leave 10 days plus the two days before the commencement. So if you allow this organization, what is more than likely to happen yeah. is that they will roll out untrained or insufficiently trained. As, as we witnessed during, during the election. Um, election. We witnessed that. And not only that, even a lot of the people who will form the ad hoc staff yes. have not known that they will become part of the exercise. One of the key things that happened in the general elections is that in a particular state, Anambra, yes. as at 2 p.m. on the election day, INEC was still recruiting people who will serve as coalition officers. We have proof. As of 2 p.m. Elections were ongoing. By 2 p.m., they were sending text messages, please come to INEC office, headquarters, state office. And people rushed to state office. By 2 p.m., they were now doing crash orientation and deploying them on the election day. We had a guest the other day who told us an incident in Sokoto that even though some were trained for election, but they were not the ones deployed for the election duty. So you, you now see someone holding the beavers, but unable not to operating. use the beavers. So you see a lot of this operational inefficiency is part of the reason why we asked Nigerians to be vested in the process. And our argument is that we now live in a post-trust Nigeria, where, for instance, post-trust, uh, yes. so no, no trust anymore. It awesome. has fundamentally... There is deficit. It has broken down. Even your tailor. I have a wedding on Saturday. And then on Saturday, you, you, the clothes are not ready. Your mechanic, you must have to be there to police him or her. Mm. In fact, you see my mustache? Yeah. Shaved off. Because I just kept quiet and allowed the barber to do... It's shaved off. Oh. Look, because they can't even get... So, so things as basic as, as trust where you can go to the market and you can be sure that what the person is wearing to you is original is original. Where you can buy drugs, you can be sure that it's original. So in that instance, even organizations like NPC, like INEC, you can no longer trust that they will do what they ought to do. Ordinarily, when they tell us that there's no problem, people should be able to go to, to bed. To believe them. But mm. now that you're living in a post-trust Nigeria, all you have to do is to double the layer of checks, 
double the layer of uh, if, you know, introspection. That's why you have to trust, but verify. Mm. So what I'm saying is this, that that institution, for us not to waste the huge investment of money Nigerians have made in this process, Especially borrowed money and uh, in the process yeah. is that Nigerians must make effort. You know, it's two point six billion dollars. When, when you translate that to naira, around officially one point two zero nine trillion or one point nine trillion uh, in the parallel market. That can fund the budget of how many states for one year? Invest that in education you see the immediate effect. Invest that in health. But now that we've decided to do census with it, yes. what we must ensure is that the process is credible and sufficiently so. So why are you, why are you against it? I am not because against it. Because you, you said mm -hmm. that the, the census should not hold. And we've seen quite a number of people mm -hmm. following you on mm -hmm. your social platforms, you know, agreeing with mm -hmm. what you... Are you not misleading Nigerians, Chima? No. Uh, <laughs> if you followed my work for quite a time now, yes. you will see the forthrightness with which I do what I do. I am not asking for the census to stop. Okay. What I'm asking is for the census to be delayed or postponed. And I make that argument on five talking points. I said one is the... Five talking points. Five okay, arguments. let's take them one after the other. Okay, the first one, and let me take them in order of priority, okay. is unaudited systems and processes. Right? I support the digitization. Nigeria is migrating to a digital tribe, right? And that's why you saw digitization in INEC matters, you saw digitization with N, you know, uh, NIN, you saw digitization with Norban, you saw even digitization with banking. Then you're also seeing digitization with census management. And they have re issued statements suggesting to us of their readiness to migrate to a digital platform whereby they're going to be deploying digital devices, they're acquiring PDAs, they're acquiring servers, they said they've acquired geospatial devices, they've said they have servers and a lot of things. Yeah. And if you go to their website, the claim is boldly written that this is going to be a digitized census. And mm. I welcome that. However, what we are doing is that the systems and the processes have not been audited. So what we are doing is like going from the production site to the market and we have not done the integrity test wow and the real scenario test integrity test in the sense that if you are going to use this pda mm. there ought to be integrity and scenario tests for us especially nigerians in their clusters to understand how the processes work whether the processes can be compromised whether the processes are efficient take an instance with what happened with INEC. despite all the assurances yeah as little as sensitive INEC staff withholding allegedly passwords from the field agents that delay the time of the upload of election results. Mm -hmm. So you see, when you are designing systems, you design systems and processes in mind because those systems are going to be used by individuals. And before I walked in, I started doing this. I spoke with a doctor of computer sciences whose major work is on human interaction with systems. Mm -hmm. And when you're designing systems, you don't design them as if they're going to be used in heaven. You're going to design it as if the human beings... You should domesticate it. Yes, yes. So those human beings have varying degrees of autonomy over the system. So if you're going to give coppers or anybody, ad hoc staff, PDAs, and there are rack techs or their equivalent of rack techs mm. who are going to be overseeing those processes, and there are also people who are going to be seeing the several layers of audits before the, the data is officially gazetted. So those people have varying degrees of autonomy over the system. Now you're going to have integrity tests and scenario tests to determine how vulnerable those systems are to, with the hands of the people using them. So where those people can... So you don't have relapse yes. midway. So where it is officially determine that mm. those people can manipulate the systems, then either working under duress or being coerced or being induced, then those people have the... So if today they are discussing external compromise, which is that the server might have been hacked. Yes. But what of internal compromise? So when you are which designing... Very likely. When you are designing a system and process, you must subject them to integrity tests for you to determine what are the layers of external compromise and how do we mitigate that? And you think... Uh, and what are the layers did not of... do this? You think they didn't do this? Have you seen the results? No, oh. because if this is done, I'm not saying that because what they usually do yeah. is to double down on public relations campaign. Mm. And public relations campaign is different from audits where daily trust will have to send in their technical team mm. for them to see and audit and then come back and use the platform of daily trust or daily TV 
Trust TV rather, to tell your viewers that this has been done as a way for them to have confidence, implicit confidence in the process. INEC did not do that, and today you're seeing the results by multiple litigations cut out all, all, all over the country. And there is the likelihood that we will witness the same. What we are going to witness yeah. is even worse because INEC's, INEC's own, because of the climate mm. or where they operate, have more scrutiny. Unfortunately for the NPC, it has far fewer scrutiny than, N and, and by, that, that than INEC. INEC. And this is sustained by their laws. For instance, NPC is not mandated by law to show all workings. The census data of 2006, yes. researchers applied for the certified through copy of the raw data. If you said that XYZ state has 10 million, 15 million, 30 million, how did you arrive at the numbers? Can we see for data integrity checks and all of those things? They are not mandated by law to show. INEC is mandated by law to at least give you the Beavers report, yes. give you the IRF reports. If you want, they can bring the ballot papers. Wow. But NPC is not mandated by law it's to It's not do mandated. So. It's, it's protected. No, 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 you don't have any rights. The only person that needs to accept the census is the president. And, and once, once he accepts, accepts you can't do anything. You can't even litigate. And so in that atmosphere of secrecy, and again, look at we are less than two weeks to, <clears throat> to the census. Mm. You can go and ask Nigerians, even here in Abuja where we sit, how many of you are aware that there's going to be a census? And then extrapolate that to what might happen in the village. I, I think you have spoken to our deputy editor in chief on his Monday column. He mm -hmm. raised some of these issues about the timing, the second one, the awareness. Mm -hmm. But they, they wrote a rejoinder mm -hmm. to us saying that about, uh, is it two months or there about mm -hmm. when they check the awareness mm -hmm. template? Over 70% of Nigerians are aware. And as we speak, they said 100% of Nigerians are aware that census is going to happen. Wow. Do you see what we're now saying? Because... That's the assumption. When you set a test for yourself, yes. the more than likely thing that is happening is that you also pass that test. And you will pass that test with flying colors. Let the public set the test for them. Remember what I next told you, mm. that the beavers had 98% and sometimes 900% efficiency rates. Mm. And today, what is happening? These people are saying that Nigerians are 100% aware. If you have, just go to the streets, do voice pop and ask people whether, there are three key questions you have to ask people. One, are you aware that census is happening in less than two weeks? Mm. And allow them to answer. Two, if the census happens today, are you willing to participate because the census has to be the success of census, one half of it is dependent on NPC. The other half is dependent on Nigerians collaborating with NPC officials to volunteer information. Yes. So are you going to volunteer information when enumerators knock on your door? That's number two. And then number three, do you trust the NPC to conduct a sufficiently free, fair, and credible census exercise? That will be Go and ask, and there will be a step. Just ask, three questions. Ask these three questions, and you have your answers. And not understand. what they are assuring you. Mm. Go and do your own investigations. And I've done this with a small, limited sample size. Okay, and you've done it on your yes, own. Yes, on my own. Limited and what was the outcome? It, you, you can't say that mine is scientific enough yes. for us to extrapolate yeah. for the whole But you country. experimented. But I experimented. And the result, a lot of Nigerians, even people who are aware, who are supposed to be aware, people who you consider literates, mm. people who, unfortunately, uh, for the NPC, regardless of how much they invest in media and publicity, the furrow around elections will continue to dominate the media. That's what you have to understand. Because you as a media professional knows that it is difficult for two important things to be trending at the same time. Yeah. As of today, the most important conversation in the minds of people is the elections. Especially the court in process Adamawa. Yeah. In Adamawa, mm. in several by elections, the elections and then the transition. World over transition is a big business. Look at what is happening in the UK, for instance, where uh, their king is about to be. It is dominating the media. It, it is has dwarfed many no, other issues. Many other issues. So in Nigeria, we have about to face a major, um, um, this is our 23rd or 24th year yeah. of unbroken democracy, and there's a transition. So it's a major issue. So when you are transiting, this is not the best time. So no matter how much you put into media publicity, and I, don't, I doubt that they put that. But it will not dwarf it will not the transition. Dwarf. So you have to wait a minute to strike when the iron is hot. If indeed the NPC is striking, I can tell you for free that the iron is not hot. And that is why we have asked them to allow this transition to hold. We are still Nigerians. We will still be here. Nobody will hear. We are not running anywhere. Yeah. We are here. Delay this. Allow the new government to come in. Allow the new government to stabilize. Address some of the concerns that have been raised around the census. And then you can now carry out your exercise. Okay. After digitization, you said there are about five. Five. What is the second one? So then the, the second one. So 
Key issue is that those systems and the processes must be audited as a way to see what the flaws are likely to be okay. and to upgrade those systems to mitigate those flaws before they happen. Because yeah. what we did with INEC is a national experimentation. We want to do all our experimentation before deployment. Mm. Unfortunately, that is not being done. And what, that's why we are insisting that the systems and the processes must be audit, audited and subjected to integrity tests. The second one is mood of the country. There was fuel scarcity before the elections. Mm. There was naira scarcity occasioned by the CBN policy. Yeah, naira swap. Naira swap new, and even that, yeah. the non-availability of either the new and the old currencies. And, and the whole election situation. And then anybody knows, not just in Nigeria where you have ethnic proclivities, but even in advanced democracies, Example is the immediate past elections in the United States, where you saw the division between Democrats and Republicans. Every election season is heated, mm. and there are animosities. And these particular elections have also brushed off on the touch points of different sensitivities, sensitivities in Nigeria. You have your emotional, religious discussions, it's ongoing. You have also your religious, ethnic discussions, it's ongoing. So those things are supposed to come in on the, during the elections. We discourage that, but unfortunately, our politicians don't know how to do politics without yeah. it, it, it touching. So <laughs> they are, they are at, actually the, the, the sweetness. Yes, as of today, you have those discussions ongoing, and the emotions are still raw. And therefore, our argument is that it is not safe enough for MPC to soldier on with this exercise. Take, for instance, what happened in Lagos, where people were flung away from their polling units on the election day. It was reported widely, right? And then a few short weeks after, you are knocking on their door to count them as part of that Lagos population. Close your eyes and imagine what could happen. Today, you see what happened in, in Adamawa. And you, uh, you, so a lot of things are ongoing. We're asking these people, can you delay this census and allow the government to heal the nation? Because mm. after the elections, once there is inauguration, and once there is that finality with the Supreme Court, everybody knows the losers will know that finally we've lost. The after winners, inauguration. Yes, after inauguration, and especially when you have extended and stretched the whole gamut of the adjudicatory process, yeah. which ends at the Supreme Court. Once the Supreme Court makes their pronouncement, she, whether you like it or not, she will adjust it, yeah. and wait for the next four years. Mm. So allow the nation to adjust to a new Tinubu presidency, or whatever the Supreme Court might pronounce, and allow the government to heal the nation, because once you finish this, uh, the campaigns, you now talk about bringing everybody together, mm. trying to use maybe appointments, key projects, to try to bring the nation together. So once you've achieved that level of you know, unity, some form of unity, or at least you douse the tensions a bit, you can now deploy on a major national exercise. Right after the disappointing general elections, if you do another disappointing census exercise, Check well and see how it will boot with the country. It may not result not well for, for that's for the that's country. the risk assessment we have done and we are advising the government. We love the government. Can you hold on, on this for a while and do it when it is most appropriate? As of today, it is not appropriate. It is not even safe enough for MPC officials to deploy because there are people who are angry with the Nigerian states. Because of the election? Yes. And then when you come back with your PDAs that also look like the beavers, by the way. And then you're knocking on their doors to ask them, how many kids do you have? How many toilets do you have in your house? Because you know it's a population and housing census. Yes. Because some of these questions will be asked. And then people can just walk you out of their house, the polite ones. People who are not so polite might attack officials. And we're saying to NPC, regardless of what you do, you cannot find police and military resources to deploy to every unit of the enumerators because they are working for just three days. And they will require more deployments compared to what they had during the election because, because this was what almost had, every other person. What you had in the election is people will gather in polling units, 176,000 polling units. Mm. Today you are going to every single hamlet, every single to cover village. over 230 every, million. So, and you're doing that in just three days. You're doing that in just three days. And let's forget the ungoverned spaces. Let's Forget the insecurity in Nigeria. Well, let's forget some local government because if you have achieved a stable climate, mm. you can pinpoint those uh, flashpoints and then deploy against possible skirmishes in yeah. those flashpoints, right? And then where and NPC must show us how they are able to determine because despite all these things, there are places you cannot deploy to. I can tell you there are places in the northeast of Nigeria, in the southeast of Nigeria, in the north central of Nigeria, that no matter what MPC does, its enumerators cannot work in there. These places are known. But they said they've been working on this since 2013. Remember that by their own official reports, mm. they said that they were not able to deploy even the area demarcations that was done. 
that they were not able to deploy in some local governments. It was on the official report. And they said that because of that, they used geospatial mapping yeah. to do that. So today, they have not walked us and told us the processes that they will use to count in those hard-to-reach areas. There are places you and I know. You have, you have been reporting security for quite a while now. Yeah. And you are aware of the security situation in the country. There are places we know that officials, even if I am deployed, I won't go. Yes, Chima, I attended one of um, the um, interactive sessions organized yes, yes. by... Um, NPC and one of the officials said that um, why they, they, they feel Buhari is the right person to conduct this census is because of the sensitivities around it that if they allow another president to come and, and do the tendency is that he would not do it he will say maybe until when he wins his second term because maybe the outcome will actually anger some people that will rise against him during the next election. Do you agree with what they said? No, I don't agree with that. Uh, because Buhari's was sworn in eight years ago. It will mm. be exactly eight years come May 29. Mm. And the memo for a census was on his table in 2016. Right? Yeah. When Nigeria was due for census, he delayed it. It was just one year of coming, he delayed it. Now, today, Maybe he was thinking of winning the 2019 before doing We it. don't know what he was thinking, but the decision was that he delayed, and he did not explain himself to Nigerians, yeah. right? And so, having said that, as of today, a lot of the critical steps that are relevant for the census have been taken. The monies have been appropriated. Yeah, they are only looking for around 360 something uh, billion, according to mm -hmm. uh, Minister, you know, the Minister of, 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 um, of State, Budget. Of yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the monies have been appropriated, some of the devices have been acquired, the processes are already in motion. I don't think any sensible government that was elected by Nigerians will see that we have made progress and call it off. If you're calling it off, then we're going to lose that investment made because some of the systems... In trillions, we're talking yes. about... Um, yes. Um, so, so, and then if Nigerians points. ask for the yeah. census to happen, census will happen. So you're afraid that you're not going to do something and then you do it shortly. We're not going to get another opportunity except in the next 10 or 20 years. So if we're going to do it, why don't we do it well, considering the enormous amount of resources? And by the way, if you're talking about the president... Yes. And to be fair to him... I think he's done quite. There are areas, especially when it comes to infrastructure and things, if you're going to critique his government, that he has done well. Mm. But if you're also an honest person, you also see that there are areas he has not done spectacularly well. And so that is also a discussion that needs to be had. That after overseeing a slightly disappointing national elections, do we trust this government to oversee? Especially knowing the Buhari's body language, that allows people to excel mm. at what they do. And minimal interference, you know that. Mm. And so, as of today, he has not even said anything. But is that a strength? Minimal interference, is that a strength? It could be a strength because life is somehow osmoronic because your very strength can turn out to be your weakness, mm. right? Because minimal interference, look at what Einek did with his legacy. Bugari was saying that this election that will be his legacy. Or maybe later Nigerians will realize that uh, INEC has done spectacularly well. Wow. Going at the, looking at the electoral map. I keep asking this question because... Wow. No, no, no. If, if that, that... We can have this conversation... Even though this is not a deviation from no, the... No, it's not a deviation, yeah. but if you have that discussion, whatever Nigerians decide, fine. But as of today, mm. the opinion on the streets is that INEC did not live up to... We have not seen it this bad. We have what happened in Adamawa with what happened with the go to court, with INEC delaying upload, disobeying even its own guidelines. Now it's left for the courts to determine whether those things substantially affected the outcome of the elections or not. Mm. But if you ask a common man on the streets today, uh, INEC did not spectacularly live up to expectations. So why do you think the president delayed doing this thing since the he census. came in? He's supposed to do it a year after... He we and to, I, th I think the goodwill was there and all the, that. He had everything he needed. He had the goodwill to do the census, but he chose not to. But we have to ask the president why he did not. Mm. I cannot be clairvoyant that yeah. was the president's mind. So that is the second point about mood of the country. And that is why we're asking the NPC to delay these elections at the census by at least seven months. So that you- Seven so, months? Yes. That is your prescription? Yes, what we're looking at, because we did a data-backed analysis. One, you know that the census is funded by 2022 appropriations, not even this year's budget. Okay. And that appropriations has act have been extended twice. 
The first time was a complete extension. The second time was a capital vote extension. So what we are operating in Nigeria now is two budgets. We are operating recurrent expenditure 2023 budget, um, capital expenditure 2022 budget. That was and extended. That was extended twice. So a lot of the things you're seeing happening with NPC is still on the extended 2022 budget, which we can still extend again to get into maybe October. So even if we don't want to extend, we can now say, what have you spent out of this money? And what can we do into a revised 2023 budget yeah. that can be passed and so that you are not afoul of any known law mm. and you can continue your exercise? We have looked at when is Supreme Court more than likely to end their, their litigation? You just do the mapping and see when they are more than likely to end their litigation. And then when is the new government able to appoint all the ministers and settling it for around one month, two, mm. three months? Before yes, going. As, as they promised, they said that um, mm -hmm. they are sure that mm -hmm. uh, the incoming president mm -hmm. will have his cabinet mm -hmm. as soon as, as he, So as allow he him to settle in maybe three months to understand what is happening. And then you can now. So we are saying that October, November will be a good time. All right. To, to do we the will census. go on a short break. And mm -hmm. when we return, you now uh, mm -hmm. list the, the remaining um, areas you think they should take. Thank Not all viewers, please don't go away. We will be back shortly. Welcome back, uh, viewers, if you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow the conversation across our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. We still have Chima Christian in the studio. He's an advocate for the extension of the 2023 um, census. national census. I don't know, maybe you mm -hmm. have more Nigerians on the mm -hmm. same page with you. But do we, do, I want you to round up mm -hmm. these issues be, before I ask you a question on whether the incoming government will even accept mm -hmm. at the end of the day if they do the... The, the, the organizational capacity of the NPC, that's where you have some of the things the man was talking about in the introduction. Okay, the... the, the, the so okay, if you yeah. look at the organizational capacity of the NPC, take a look at the law setting of the NPC. Take a look at how the 36 or 37 commissioners were appointed. Take a look at how the chief executive of that organization was appointed. Then leave that alone. Go into ad hoc recruitment. One million plus, yeah. How many, how were they recruited? Have they even been recruited? Have they said they have. <laughs> Even the people who were recruited don't know. Some of them don't know that they've been that recruited. That they have been recruited. Yes. And some of them who know that they've been recruited are complaining of inability to log in onto yeah, the system. Yeah, I received quite so, a number of so calls. So you have that, a uh, lot of complaints around management. And then, whether we like it or not, the NPC has continued to run skeletal operations. They did the big survey. I think they did a health survey or something. They, they've done a number of surveys since 2006. But the thing is this, that that organization has not deployed nationally mm. in nearly 17 years. Mm. So when you have an organization, when you have an organization that has not deployed nationally in 17 years, then what you're going to consider is that the cumulative productive capacity mm. within that organization has atrophied due to lack of full use in 17 years. Yeah. So what Nigeria is about to do is to get a vehicle that we have packed for 17 years. Mm. And we want to set out on a long distance journey. So we need to know that the rusty parts have been greased. We need to know that the tires have been inflated. Mm. We need to know that the vehicle has been thoroughly serviced yeah. before you pull it out on the road for a major long distance journey. If not, you are more than likely to stop halfway. As of today, Nigerians have not seen the training models. Have you trained your staff well? Even the in-house staff, what are the layers of the in-house training? Who was there when you trained them? Wow. Big and question. what was the training like? Then the external guys that are coming in, have you trained them? What was the training like? How were they recruited? What are the processes around that like? So when you get into organizational, even the organization will have to talk about deployments. You're going to be deploying Nigerians nationally across every nook and cranny. There are places you have to use Okada. There are places you have to use Keno. There are places you have to use Camels. There are places you have to use... Any. So when you look at the, the logistics, the forward deployment, the backward deployment, especially when you compare it with what happened with I, yeah. And then you, you begin to see that if you introspect that deeply, you will see that this organization may not necessarily, in my own estimation, have the capacity 
claimed capacity to do a national exercise. Not because they want to compromise, but because they don't have the inherent capacity. Yeah. And because the things that are markers of those capacities have not been, you, you have to see one, two, three, and four before you determine that this organization, as of today, we've not seen those things. Now talk about the compromises with the system, whether their systems were hacked less than two weeks. People and and that is the question I wanted to ask, whether we are really ready for the digital census of course they said they have bought um, is it 500,000 you know is PDS? yeah mm -hmm. for all these just do we INEC mm -hmm. kept telling us that they have all this equipment is it really safe to say that it is going to be 100 percent digital census we won't know until we subject these things to test integrity test yeah everything NPC say we accept but demonstrate it to us. Not PR, but integrity tests. Let us see. If you say you have acquired these systems, where are they? If you say that they can do this, can we see what and they can and, do? And uh, acquiring is one thing. Deploying the way it should be deployed is You another. remember that it was just three weeks ago that the Federal Executive Council gave them approval of, I think, 3 point something billion to acquire software. Now, the question you ask yourself is, have the software been acquired? And how have you integrated the acquired software into 500,000 devices? So you have to ask the question. Okay, Chima. Some people, you know, are, are suggesting that um, during the 2006 census, mm -hmm. the president-elect, he was um, governor of Lagos. He rejected the census for some obvious reasons. And part of the allegations were that he may not likely accept this one for reasons best known to him. Of course, we contacted mm -hmm. his um, media team, and the response they gave us was that um, the census has not been conducted yet, so they don't yeah. even have any, any speculations. Answer, yes, answer to us. So, how, how do we reconcile this now, going because by his um, antecedents? If you judge it by only his answer, of course, you know politically where I stand. I don't support Tinobu, right? He's, yeah. If he's inaugurated, he'll become Which is your right, yeah. Yes, but in this, you also ask, was he the only person that rejected the 2006 census? Historically, if you look at census numbers in Nigeria, they have always ended up being contested. Yes. What is the bone of contention? Because Nigeria continues to operate a feeding bottle structure where you have feeding bottle from Abuja down to the states and local government. So 30 percent of structuring. So issue 30 percent of Nigeria's resources are shared, predicated on census numbers. So that has motivated a lot of political actors to inflate numbers at the local level. And at the state level, one, you can use that because your census numbers inf informs the amount of allocation sent to you. It also informs your showing and your performance in national elections, right? Mm. So there is this activity of political, you know, stakeholders to try to impact or, you know, if it is in the language of budget, they call yeah. it budget padding. Yeah. So, so people have tend to pad census. And the secrecy around the 2006 census, as of today, I mentioned earlier, the data have not been released. If you say the Nigerians were XYZ number of people, no problems. How did you arrive at that? And any elementary you're talking about. And the, any elementary student of mathematics will understand what we say when we say show all workings. You don't want to tell us that X is equal to eight. You have to show us how you arrived at X is equal to eight. Mm. Right? So MPC does not show all workings. They did not do in 2006. And according to the laws of governing this particular census, they will also not do so in 2023. So when people begin to, especially when you say that there was, it was hacked, it was not hacked, he was drunk, he was not drunk. When you begin to have conflicting signals from an agency, especially in a post-trust Nigeria, then people are well in their rights to question the integrity of the data. And if you claim that your data is intact, then extend your data, let researchers you know, do data integrity tests on your data. As a way. So in 2006, it was not just Tinubu, a lot of people, it was just that Tinubu had the resources. It was more vocal, yeah. yeah he had too. the resources as a state governor of one of the richest states, if not the richest states in Nigeria, to fund a parallel thing that they did in Lagos. Mm. But it was not nationally accepted because yeah. the laws does not support that. Mm. But at least he made some moves around that. So today, if the census is conducted, in a sufficiently free, fair, and credible process, even if it is a drunk person, he will accept. But when you conduct a census in an atmosphere of secrecy, the systems are not tested, the processes not tested, the human capital capacity not tested, human interactions with systems, zero. So, when so is it a time bomb? We're looking at many things. It the is. The census, the Naira swap, the subsidy, the election, 
and many other things at the twilight of an administration? Is it a time bomb or they are setting traps for the incoming government? Or is it to confuse the system? I don't know. I think that the political gladiators should have mercy on Nigerians. They should just have mercy on us. Because check the average man for no fault of his. I have never seen an average man that hid money in his wardrobe or in the sewer or in the waste pipe or in one of those places. But the average man was punished for a crime he knew nothing about. Then where did we get it wrong? Where? If you said, because then, mm. one of the reasons why they justified the Naira swap mm. was that they said that they have credible information that people were storing money in the sewer, in this. If you know those people, arrest them. Instead of punishing... Everybody. And interestingly, the people who committed these crimes are walking scot-free. There was this woman in Anambra State, in Amako General Hospital, mm. Chukwe Mekod Mego Juku General Hospital, in Anambra State, North Anambra State. They couldn't pay for blood, blood, blood. Mm -mm. They didn't have her blood in the hospital. They have to contact external uh, blood bank to get blood. And the transfer was not going. Cash was nowhere to be found. Before the blood bank could confirm the transfer, the woman had given up. Uh -oh. before. So you had a lot of issues. In Nigerians, we are dying literally because market women will trek from their homes far distance into the market. And they will go there. They can't sell. And they bring back the waste. And it spoils in their homes. Yeah, especially this, vegetable. The, the, the experiences were there. And Nigerians were punishing, the government was punishing us for a crime committed by a few elites. Instead of identifying those people and jailing them, and everything will be all right, you leave them, they are still working this street. Some of them are now governors, House of Reps elect, members elect, senators elect, mm. and the ordinary man is suffering. Some people have lost their lives in this process. So you, a lot of issues around the rushed implementation of the Naira swap. And, and you are now against similar experience. The rushed census. implementation, rushed But census. they said they've started this since 2013, this was what they said. Well, of but course. The, the, I it, know it doesn't appear that... That they are ready, even the funding too. We hear the National Minister of State yeah. saying that they, they don't have enough money. And so the argument should be made. If you need 500 Naira to do this exercise, and you have only 250 Naira. Can you do a credible exercise with 250? If yes, go ahead. If you cannot, then don't waste that 250. Wait 250. until you have the remainder. The remainder. And this, this raises the big question. I, I know that for sure all over the world, if you are going for census, you get a lot of support from like uh, UNDP, mm -hmm. you know, and many other donor agencies. I'm not hearing about them. I don't know. Is it that they, they feel that we're not ready for this and that is why they are quiet or I don't know. It may no, be no, a tough question I, I, I since you're not part of NPC. No, no, I'm not part of it, but I, you know because in trying to do what I'm doing, anyway, what people don't understand about, about my work is that the, what you see at the surface is only a fraction of it. Okay. What goes under is the huge part of my work and I don't publicize it, mm -hmm. but I've engaged with... How do you mean, yeah? In trying to discuss the census, I've engaged with a number of stakeholders Offline discussions, online discussions, mm. things that they are not willing to say publicly. Nigeria is a sovereign nation, so there's a limited interference. Yeah. Yes, some of them are bringing money and technical expertise, but if you advise, all they have is in advisory capacity. Mm. Because Nigeria is a sovereign nation. And so when they advise and you don't listen, oh, they, they will just push. They, they will push. They will and then the even the budget you are telling them, they have conducted census in their countries. And they know the budget, the amount of money they spent. And today, Nigeria is conducting one of the most expensive census in the whole world. In, in their response to our story, because we, we did a big story last week on, on, on this. They said that we forgot to take note of the infrastructure deficit in Nigeria. That if you go to Brazil, if you go to India, despite the huge population, they are spending less because they have invested over time on infrastructure, they are talking about electricity, they are talking about not enumerating houses because they have all this, you know, in their data bank. Um, that, that's not a, well, you give it to them that they have to say something. But whether or not we accept what they say is our own prerogative. Okay. Um, interestingly, I'm also just coming back from India. Okay, you went there. I was invited by the government of India. That's why I tell you that the work I do is just on the, on mm. the so you won't see it. You won't even see the pictures anywhere. 
I was on the invitation of government of India, and part of where we visited was the Election Commission of India. Okay. And we spent Tell us 10 something days about that. interrogating their systems, their processes. We saw what they did. India has more rural population than Nigeria. Rural population. I'm telling you, we saw videos of election officers climbing camels. Um, you know, it is, you see, when you go to Delhi, Mumbai, and all of those cities, it's just like going to Abuja and Lagos and saying that you know Nigeria. Yes, it's, it's, it's census, census or election? No, no, no. The election management, and the, I didn't interrogate the census, okay. but the election management because you deploy using the same infrastructure. Ah, so we, it's not that tag. Uh, Institutions are working at cross purposes. No, no, no. They, they have they, maybe. A, no, no, no. There is a election kind of commission synergy. of India. There is ECI, okay. and there is an institution responsible for the census. Okay. But what Nigerians are saying, Nigerian authorities are saying, is that they have better infrastructure. And I'm saying to you, yes, India has comparatively better than Nigeria, but they have rural population where the election management officials have to sometimes strike for ten days before they get to the polling units. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, wow. The, the documentaries are there. Documentaries are there. And so when people don't know these things, you can bamboozle us with drama. But some of us actually know that some of these excuses are not tenable anywhere. That you're just saying what you just have to say. Like saying that your official was drunk. We know that he wasn't drunk. But so, and what about the, the hack he, that he, he Well, the, the man alluded. said he was hacked. We have gotten chatters from... One of the things you will know is this, that in a leaked memo, uh, in the United States, there was this leaked memo that still trended, I think, two or three weeks ago. In that leaked memo, the U.S. intelligence community mm. quoted Nigerian authorities, the highest level of DSS, knew that there were issues with the beavers before the elections. In fact, they quoted two top DSS officials discussing the issues around the compromise of beavers, failure of beavers mm. before the elections. So the United States intelligence yeah. knew that our own local intelligence knew that the beavers was failing before the elections, yet they deployed nationally. And so those are there in the public space. So if people are going to be denying about whether the systems were compromised or not, it is not left for me to say anything that I shouldn't say. Mm. But people know what happened. And those people, if those information leak, we will know. But for today, let us take the official report that the official was drunk. Okay, people, many, don't really understand why census. Earlier in the conversation, you may mention that um, this money they are marked for census is enough to, you know, mm -hmm. provide health or education mm -hmm. and all that. But um, in real terms, they say census is meant to guide officials on what to do. Because if you say you, are, you will build school here, mm -hmm. maybe that is not the priority of the people. But by, but by having the data, it helps. Going forward, what do you think? officials should do in sensitizing people to understand that beyond the politics of numbers mm -hmm. that okay uh, resources more should come to me because mm -hmm. i have more people mm -hmm. that there is economic sense mm -hmm. to census well there is economic sense and it's left for the media for the government of issues for to sensitize people and that brings us to the fifth point okay. which is the general lack of awareness mm. I've asked you about three questions. People don't even know that there is census going to happen. And even those who know, I can't ask you this. Yes. Have you seen the guidelines for the census, this 2023 census? Honestly, I haven't. If you, with your level of exposure and education, have not seen the guideline, check what is happening with the public. I have not seen the guideline myself. <laughs> and I have been interrogating for four months trying to get the guideline. Yeah. And so the guidelines are not known. The laws governing the processes are not known. What and they should be made available in motor parks, the in is different happening. languages, and all that. By the time you are supposed to know what is supposed to happen, when they knock on your door, to the time your data is officially gazetted, the processes are supposed to be known. Nigerians don't know anything about the process. And you are eroding them into an exercise they have no knowledge about. Okay, finally, I, w I want you to, to advise on how to reduce suspicion around the whole thing, that census is about development? First, I, I no longer have the confidence in advising government. I have advised government in the first few years of my public policy work. I continue to do so, but, you know, I like advising Nigerians because, in my view, democracy operates a give and take or a demand and supply kind of thing. If you don't demand for good governance, you're not going to get it. If you don't demand for credible census, you're not going to get it. These things are happening. Nigerians saw all these things are happening and they will keep quiet. Mm. And then what will happen is that when the census, they will start shouting, oh, the census was not proper. But I asked Nigerians, who enabled them? It's your own inability to speak up 
when it mattered that allowed these things to happen. So my advice is for Nigerians to engage. Okay. To Nigerians, you yes. are concentrating on Nigerians. On Nigerians, yeah. to insist okay. and to prevail on the federal government to postpone the exercise. So whatever legal that Nigerians are supposed to do to prevail on their government, people who can lobby will lobby, those who can protest will protest, those who can write letters will write, those who can do media advocacy can do media, those who can go to court. Mm. Because if you argue your case in court and you give them evidences, a court can slam an injunction and tell them to stop this thing, yeah. on pending the time the cases are determined. Yeah. So Nigerians, I'm advising Nigerians to ask their federal government if they want this census, no problem. If they don't want and they want it postponed, Nigerians should ask their government. This government is our own property. Property. Oh. NPC is employed because we ask them to be employed. Yeah. So they are serving us, not we serving them. All if right. we want this census to be postponed, believe me, it will happen. But if Nigerians sit down and grumble and murmur, then that We're is already. not the way. So right. before you get Nigeria working, you must first of all get Nigerians who are able to get Nigeria to work. All right, Chiba Christian, thank you very much for coming to the program. Thank you so very much yes, for was, me. This is Chiba Christian, a public affairs analyst who has invested a lot on census issues. We hope you enjoyed the program. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. I'm Hamza Idris.